Good afternoon, class. Today I'm going to go over some key points for Chapter 16, which is entitled Investments. The learning objectives uh, are, number one, explain how to account for debt investments, and number two, explain how to account for stock investments. So why corporations invest? Corporations purchase investments in debt or stock securities generally for one of three reasons. One, corporations may have excess cash. Two, generate earnings from investment income. Or three, for strategic reasons. So investments in government and corporation bonds. Entries are made to record the acquisition, the interest revenue, and the sale. So cost includes all expenditures necessary to acquire these investments, such as the price paid plus brokerage fees, commission fees, etc., if any apply. So as an illustration, C. Jones Incorporated acquires 50 of Moore's Real Estate 8% 10-year $1,000 bonds on January 1, 2020 for $50,000. The entry to record the investment is a debit-to-debt investment of $50,000 and a credit to cash for $50,000. So this is the entry for C. Jones to put the, the purchase of uh, the debt on its books. So recording bond interest. You calculate and record interest revenue based upon the carrying value of the bond, the times interest rate, and the times portion of the year bond is outstanding. So illustration, Moore's Real Estate, the bonds pay interest of $4,000 annually on January 1st. If C. Jones Incorporated fiscal year ends on December 31st, it accrues the interest earned since January 1st and calculate the, the accrued interest. And so here the adjusting entry is a debit to interest receivable for $4,000 because that's what they're going to receive. And... Uh, interest revenue for $4,000, recognizing the revenue. And so since they're accruing the entry at December 31st, it becomes a receivable of $4,000 on C. Jones' books. So C. Jones Incorporated reports the interest revenue as a current asset in the balance sheet. It reports the interest revenue under other revenue and gains in the income statement. C. Jones Incorporated reports receipt of the interest on January 1st as follows. So now they're actually going to receive the payment. So they're going to recognize cash for $4,000, a debit, and they're going to credit the receivable that they originally had on the books for $4,000. So it's very similar to the interest activity from the bonds of the previous chapter. So assume that C. Jones Incorporated receives net proceeds of $54,000 on the sale of Moore's real estate bonds on January 1, 2021, after receiving the interest due. Prepare the entry to record the sale of the bonds. So C. Jones sold the bonds for $54,000 cash, so debit to cash, and a credit to debt investments to take off the $50,000, take them off their books. They received a gain on the sale of $4,000, gain on sale of debt investments. So debt investments are initially recorded at cost, just like with bonds. So Sally's Designs received net proceeds of $42,000 on the sale of stock investments that cost $39,500. This transaction result in reporting in the income statement A, loss of $2,500 under other expenses or losses, or B, a loss of $2,500 under operating expenses, or C, a gain of $2,500 under other revenue and gains, or D, a gain of $2,500 under operating revenues. So the answer is C a gain of 2500 under other revenue and gains. So the 2500 is not um, an other expense or a loss. It's also not part of nothing it has any, nothing to do with operations. This is an investment activity which is totally separate from whatever the original business purpose is so it'll never be a uh, operating expense or operating revenue. So in turn it ends up being a other revenue and gains. So Shears Corporation had the following transactions pertaining to debt investments. So on January 1st, 2020, they purchased 30, 30 1,000 Evans Company 10% bonds for $30,000. Interest is payable annually on January 1st. On December 31st, they accrued interest on Evans Company bonds in 2020. On January 1st, 2021, they received interest on Evans Company bonds. 
So if I ask Ms. Tay Wesson to journalize the above transactions, including the accrual of the interest on December 31st, 2020, she would make an entry similar to this. So Shears Corporation had the following transactions pertaining to debt investments. So on January 1st, 2020, um, they purchased 30 $1,000 Evans Company 10% bonds for $30,000. Interest is payable annually on January 21st. So Ms. Tay Wesson will, will journalize the entry by making a debit to investments for $30,000 and a credit to cash for $30,000, recognizing the sale. This is as of January 1st, 2020. So on December 31st, 2020, accrued interest on Evans Company bonds in 2020. So calculate the amount of accrued interest. Record the, the accrual of the interest. So it'll be a debit to interest receivable, just like in a previous example. And she would credit interest revenue for thirty thousand for three thousand dollars. So it's thirty thousand times ten percent. And so you're recognizing the accrual of the interest as owed. So January first, twenty twenty one, they received interest on Evans Company bonds. Record the, the receipt of the interest. So she would debit three thousand dollars cash and credit the interest revenue. So learning objective two. Explain how to account for stock investments. So in stock investments, you have three categories. You have 0 to 20%, which is no significant influence usually exists. Uh, investment valued using the cost method. You have 20 to 50% significant influence usually exists. Investments uh, valued using the equity method. And you have between 50 and 100%. Control usually exists at 50 plus. Uh, investment valued on parents' books using a cost method or the equity method, investment eliminated in consolidation. So the accounting depends on the extent of the investor's influence over the operating and financial affairs of the issuing corporation, the investee. So here, holding of less than 20%, companies use the cost method. Investment is recorded at cost and revenue recognized only when cash dividends are received. Costs include all expenditures necessary to acquire these investments, such as the price paid plus any broker's fee, commission, etc. So holding less than 20% illustration, uh, assume that on July 1st, 2020, Clark Corporation acquires 1,000 shares, 10% ownership of Dixon Corporation, uh, common stock. Clark pays $40 per share. The entry for the purchase is... A debit to stock investments of $40,000, that's 1,000 shares for $40, and a credit to cash for $40,000 for the purchase. During the time Clark owns the stock, it makes entries for any cash dividend received. If Clark receives a $2 per share dividend on December 31st, the entry is a debit to cash, 1,000 shares of $2 uh, dividend for $2,000 and a credit to dividend revenue for $2,000, recognizing the revenue. So assume that Clark Corporation receives net proceeds of $39,000 on the sale of Dixon stock on February 10th, 2021. Because the stock cost $40,000, Clark incurred a loss of $1,000. The entry to record the sale is a debit to cash for $39,000 because that's what they received from the sale a debit to loss on sale of stock for $1,000, and a credit for, to stock investments for $40,000 for the original entry. Accounting for stock investments holding between 20 and 50%, so you use the equity method. Investor records the investment at cost and sub subsequently adjusts the amount each period for the proportionate share of earnings or dividends received. If investor shares of investees' losses exceed the carrying amount of the investment, the investor ordinarily should discontinue applying the equity method. And so here you have Sanders Corporation acquires 30% of the common shares of Richardson's company for $120,000 on January 1st, 2020. For 2020, Richardson reported net income of $100,000 and paid dividends of $40,000. Um, Ms. McKee, please prepare the entries for these transactions. So she would debit stock investments for $120,000 for the sale 
at January 1st and credit cash for $120,000. December 31st, stock investments, $100,000, 30% of the net income they reported, which is $30,000 will be debited, and she will credit revenue from investments for $30,000. December 31st, also, she would recognize 30% of the $40,000 dividend which is $12,000 debit to cash and a credit to stock investments as well. So Miller um, Corporation acquires 30% of the common shares of Beck Company for $120,000 on January 1st, 2020. For 2020, Beck reports net income of $100,000 and paid dividends of forty. After Miller posts the transactions for the year and his investments and revenue accounts will show the following. This is just an illustration of showing how T accounts will look with these type of transactions. So here you have the thirty thousand dollars. The twelve, the thirty thousand is recognized from the income. The twelve thousand is the is the thirty percent of the dividend. The equity method of accounting for long-term investments in stock should be used when investors investors has significant influence over an investee and owns between 20 and 50 percent of the investee's common stock. So holdings of more than 50 percent. When one corporation acquires a voting interest of more than 50 percent in another corporation, Investors is referred to as a parent. The investee is referred to as subsidiary. Investment in subsidiary is reported on the parent's books as a long-term investment. The parent generally prepares consolidated financial statements. Um, the consolidated financial statements will recognize the activity from the subsidiary. So those are the key points for this chapter. Um, I recommend that everyone looks over the glossary that was posted. Uh, learn those key terms and make sure to read the text before you uh, attempt the quiz. Thank you. Have a good day.